Hey friends, Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sam Via, here with another episode of Cabin Fever with my friend right over here, Ashley Moriello. <laughs> so as you know, if you've been here before, which actually I see Julie you just joined. She says first time watching. Welcome, Julie. Thanks for being here. Hi, Tara. Hi, Rainbow. Good to have you guys. Janet's in the house. What's up, Janet? <laughs> um, for Hi, those of you that this is the first time joining us. So the purpose of Cabin Fever is with Sambia as a company, our primary focus and our primary objective is to be in service to our community. And as we all got told, hey, it's time to close your salons and protect yourself, we knew that we were going to have lots of our community stuck at home trying to navigate this kind of new experience that we're all going through. My background is that I'm a, I've actually also been a life coach for about 10 years, 12, 10 to 12 years, <laughs> somewhere around in there. Dates kind of going in and out of my head. So we thought that it would be a perfect opportunity for me to bring uh, some of that world into the Sambia world of education. So the whole purpose of Cabin Fever is to bring people on that can help and support you guys more from a mental, spiritual, emotional, physical kind of sense. And that's exactly why we brought Ashley on. Ashley is a holistic health and fitness coach. There you go. <laughs> and, um, you know, when we started to talk about what we wanted to share with you, share with you guys, she had sent something to me a while back that I just really connected to because a lot of it's about being okay with being with ourselves. So um, welcome, Ashley. It's so stoked to have you on. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. So tell them a little bit about your path because you, you've had a, a great journey yourself and uh, I'm sure they'd love to hear a little bit about your journey. For sure. Um, so uh, going back to some of you may actually know me <laughs> because I'm also in the hair world. So um, yes, it is the same face. So thank you for joining on. Um, but yes, my my holistic health coach and fitness. Actually, it's funny you say, Andrew, I actually have been a health coach for 10 years. So same or 10 to 12. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I have been a health coach for about 10 years. But what made me truly find this place was um, I've, I've dealt with some trauma in my life at a young age. Um, and so I've always, and I'm also from, for those of you that may understand this, I'm from an Italian household, okay? So everything is around food, <laughs> from sadness to happiness, um, everything's around food. So my comfort was always found there, right? I, anything that I ever felt, I went to that, you know, that place. So um, throughout my life and well, it, about into my uh you know, high school days, I've always suffered from depression and anxiety. And at that time, being so young, I didn't know really what that meant. I just knew that it didn't feel right. Um, I didn't ever want to really go. I was kind of an introvert, if you will, which we'll talk about that a little later. I liked to stay home, um, but I didn't know what the label was, right? Like there was always a label on this and I didn't know truly what that meant. When I got into high school is when it really um, got worse. And uh, part of it is because I moved uh, far away from the people that I felt comfort in. Um, so it was really hard for me. I was about 16 years old. And from that moment, I started to gain a lot of weight. And being in high school, gaining weight is not necessarily the most fun thing, um, sure. especially while you're going through all this time. You know, you've got kids can be mean sometimes. <laughs> um, and I don't I won't say that I went through bullying. I was because I, I really didn't. I had friends and um, people never really gave me a hard time. But it really with me, I didn't feel myself. It was very, very hard. When I looked in the mirror, I didn't see who I thought I was in here. Um, and that really that that was very difficult for me is a very different hard, hard obstacle. Um, and so I always had very supportive parents, um, very fortunate for that. And I'd always gone through therapy my whole life. So I've always been very in tune to myself and knowing that if I don't feel correct, feel right within myself that I should explore it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so little by little, I started to lose weight and I started to do some fitness and it just ended up becoming, if any of you understand what this feels like, and I hope if you haven't, that you do one day, you get this fire lit inside of you that you become so passionate about something. You just want to learn more and more about it. And so I, through just me researching, I found this school called Integrative Nutrition and it's all holistic. Um, and it's very much about fitness and health and wellness. Um, it's not just about diet, which is a word you'll never hear me say. Um, it's just about a whole way of life. It's a good, positive lifestyle that fits you, right? So I've learned about um, every single way of living possible and found my right way. Um, and now I'm able to find, to help coach people through what their right way is to live, whether that be eating, um, you know, meditating, fitness, whatever works for them. So through that journey, that was about 10 years ago, it just, it changed my life. I, of course, yes, um, I have, you know, lost weight. I got into shape. I actually even did a fitness competition. Um, you guys could see that on my Facebook page, which I was so proud of. Um, it was something that I wanted to do for myself, but it's, it changed everything. My, and what I finally came to realize was this anxiety and depression. Yes, you do get this from, you know, genetics. It, it does, that is true, you know, and I've definitely have it on both sides of my family, but I also have found ways that I can balance it. Um, and really just search through different ways of even eating um, exercising things that will give me balance that will re that has helped me live a more positive lifestyle. So um, that's a long story of <laughs> or a short story of even a longer uh, version of basically what led me to being a holistic health coach and who I am. Cool. Yeah, Tara just she commented that she's recently been wanting to get into fitness as well, health, and it's been a passion for her. Um, interesting. We've got tons of people saying hello and just kind of kicking in the, <laughs> lots of other people like, yeah, I'm Italian too. It's intense. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, there's many different, I think, you know, you could say that about a lot of um, heritages, but sure. for me, it, like that, you know, yes. And it is. I, I grew up around Italian families and yeah. And one of them was like, they speak with their hands. And that, that's the, that's the first <laughs> Thing I kind of think of too about the Italian families I, I grew up around. Um, so, uh, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about what is what is our focus for today? Because I I think that I'm already seeing some comments that are going to totally play into this. But let's set them up on what our focus for today is. For sure. So, um, you know, in the time that we're we're dealing with right now where we're kind of, we're with ourselves, right? We're kind of being forced into this environment that is probably a little uncomfortable for a lot of people, um, where there used to be, we were able to kind of find outlets, right? Like we could go and do something else that would keep our mind off of what we're really, really should be focusing on in our mind, our body, our spirit, everything. Right now we're truly being forced and challenged to be with ourselves. Um, and I have found that to be something that we all feel, um, or I've heard a lot of people, you know, mention that this is something like, you know, I don't feel comfortable or I miss people or I miss, you know, um, I miss my friends. I miss whatever it is. And it's kind of taking the focus off of who we are. And I think it's a beautiful, like an amazing opportunity to kind of understand ourselves uh, a little bit better and and be able to be with ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know how else to put that, but just to literally, you know, I, one of my favorite quotes and Andrew, I think you've, I think I uh, sent this to you a while ago. It's um, by Pascal and it's all of humanity's problems stem from the man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it really stuck stuck with me and hit home for me because I always say that I just want to be able to put my head down at night and feel good about what I've done for the day. Yeah. And, and I think that's really 
that really speaks to being happy within yourself, within your own body. Um, and right now we're being challenged to do that, but I think it's a great opportunity if we could just be open to it. Um, Why so, do you think we're we're resistant to that? Because you know, yeah, we're we're kind of being asked to do that, kind of by um, what's happening around us at the moment. Yeah. But why do you, why do you feel that people are uh, hesitant or resistant to spend that sort of a time with themselves on a normal basis? Yeah. So I think a lot of it comes from fear. Um, we are fearful of things that we can, that maybe we're not comfortable with. And any time that we feel uncomfortable with something or we fear something, our body is automatically triggered to fight it off. It's almost like a natural defense mode. Um, it, your, your body and your mind triggers this fear and you're like, oh my God, this is not a good thing. I need to get out of here. And it's almost like feeling trapped in yourself. So I truly believe that just face valuing or putting, you know, like literally looking in the mirror and just honing in on your fear and, um, you know, like digesting it because it's really something hard. It's hard to do, um, mm -hmm. like really getting to know yourself and being like, oh, my God, you know, I need to, whether it's losing weight. Right. Like I need to lose weight. And that's a fear of, of some people to actually have to do it. Right. It's a commitment. Sure. Yeah. So change my, is scary. It, right. Exactly. And I think that it, we've had so many outlets to be able to not focus on it that right now that fear feels really strong, especially in, in a time of uncertainty. So I truly believe it's just this this fear of fear. <laughs> yeah. 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 And Diane kind of uh, shared like mind chatter. And yeah. that would most definitely be um, a big part of it because you know, when we're in the salon and we're busy and we're working 60 hour ridiculous work weeks, triple booked, you don't really have a lot of time for yeah. this thing to do a ton of self-talk because you're so interactive in the work. And we see that with traditional kind of workaholics. Yeah. Workaholics aren't necessarily workaholics because they love their work. They're just not, they're just trying to not face themselves right. <laughs> or not face something that is present. Yeah. So um, they put all their energy and focus into something else so that they don't have to uh, take that step to confront their, their own selves. Absolutely. And I love to, this could be another topic at some other point, but I always talk about the average amount of hours that Americans are even further than that internationally that that they work is insane. It's definitely it's I'm pretty sure it's 60 hours on average a week of working. Then if you put sleep on top of that, how many hours do you have for yourself? You know, not many. Not many. <laughs> so right now <laughs> we're going like total on the opposite side. There goes my hands. See? <laughs> yeah. Italian. Um, we're on the total opposite spectrum. We are not, we weren't prepared for that. We were not prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, this is kind of interesting. Kelly brought this up. I think that's interesting. If people being uncomfortable with being with themselves is kind of taught, uh, tied to that cultural version of that yeah. silence within our conversations. I, I would think so. I would definitely think so. Absolutely. I challenge you, Andrew, I'm not sure if you've ever done this. This is a great exercise. If you're, if you have somebody you're living with, right, I want you to sit face to face with them, not say a word and look right into their eyes for at least a minute and see what it feels like. Tommy, what's it feel like, bro? Type it into the chat. Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to make them do it later. <laughs> um, but it's a great, that is such a, an amazing um, thought on, yes, it, it, that's exactly right. And it's, it's that silence. It's that, you know, and it's not just with yourself either. It's also interesting to see how you can be silent with somebody that you're, you know, like a partner. Um, are you okay in silence with them as well? Because that's all confidence. That's all you know, are you okay with yourself? Yeah. So what, what do you feel is important about having 
that space and time to spend just, hey, this is my time for myself. It's just me, myself, and I. <laughs> What's important about that? Oh, there's so many things, but I think most of all um, is gaining, is being empowered. Um, having the empowerment within yourself to, oh my God, voice your, voice your opinions, gain confidence, um, you know, not living through someone else's lens. So, you know, having your own truth is so super important to be able to, and this is in your job, in your, in, in, in your personal life, feeling empowered to be able to speak um, and to like really ha have your own voice is so important. And if you don't feel comfortable within yourself, you're never going to feel the right to, to do that. Um, and once you do speak up for yourself, every, so many things come, you know, out of that, you're able to flourish in so many ways. Um, so I think, you know, being with yourself is just, if you love yourself, you can love more with everything else you do, right? So when you can really come home and, and find like an inner peace and love you, everything that go, that you have that happens around you, you can give with more love. Yeah. Um, and that's really, that's truly where I come from with, you know, loving yourself and, um, you know, and just flourishing in whatever, in whichever capacity you possibly want to. Yeah. Yeah. Gina kind of mentioned that earlier. If you don't love yourself, how can you love anyone else? Right. Right. Exactly. Because you're always coming from a blockage, right? If you, um, even because again, like something like vulnerability, right? Like we're being very vulnerable right now, being loving yourself and being with yourself. That's all vulnerability, which is super uncomfortable for a lot of people. Right. So, um, even for myself, I have to work on it every day. So I think it's, um, you know, if you're able to be vulnerable, then you can give your all to something else. If there's always a blockage there, you're, you're, there's something always holding you back. Right. So you, you kind of brought up something because when you first started that conversation, it kind of reminded me of Brene Brown. Yep. And then you kind of went into the vulnerability aspect. <laughs> are you are you a Brene, Brene Brown fan? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am. I, I am totally, you know, vulnerability is something we constantly have to work on. My God, it's, you know, I, I can say that I'm pretty comfortable with being vulnerable, mm -hmm. but I have leaky faucet. <laughs> if anybody understands what that means. Um, I've, I've gotten Reiki before. And that's like the one thing that always comes back is says you have a leaky faucet, which means that I'm constantly, um, wanting to help and being vulnerable is there's a fine line between being too vulnerable and just enough. And, um, sometimes I tend to do it too much and then that can hurt me too. So <laughs> I think yeah. it's, it's got like two different sides to it. But, yeah, um, there's kind of that balance point with that. And I, yeah. and I think that that's why, yeah. like, I know that she has seen, received so much um, flack for her and talking about vulnerability and being yeah. such a, like, a vocal source of we kind of need to get vulnerable in our society. Yes. And a lot of it is because people put such a negative label on that concept of vulnerability. And it kind of feels like that's part of what we're talking about too with the, the time um, by yourself because you then actually have to become vulnerable with your greatest critic too yep. which is ourselves you know not there's very few people that will judge you <laughs> on the same level that this little guy yeah. tends to judge us yeah so part of probably being alone with yourself is getting okay with the fact that you're going to have to get vulnerable with yourself. Yeah. It's truly uncomfortable. I, and the other thing about being vulnerable is what is like, are you telling your own story through someone else's lens or are you telling your own story? 
because I think that's also, you know, being vulnerable, it's kind of, you have to understand, are you listening to someone else's story of you or is it your story? Um, and so, you know, when you do get vulnerable, also kind of be, be mindful of that, you know, really know who, who are you? Um, and it's not what people are telling you. It's not all those, like I heard, I saw a little inner voices. Exactly. It's, no, it, it's it's not the inner voices. You have to block those out and then be vulnerable with your own self. For sure. Yeah. But I think it's a great trait. I see, um, I believe it can be a great trait, which is my father. And yes, it is a great trait. Um, it's so true. It's, it's very uncomfortable. It's hard. Um, and it, I think with vulnerability comes trust as well, right? Mm -hmm. Trust with yourself and trust with others, which is, oh. I would say in the top five fears of any anyone, right, is to like fully trust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's kind of dig into since we do have this time, <laughs> since we do have this space, and I know that some of you are starting to head back into the salon. I think that for most, unless you're an independent stylist. You're still going to have some time and space because of shifting within the salon and things like that. So I don't necessarily foresee that for those of you that are in the salon industry, that we're just all of a sudden going to be back to that full steam schedule for now. So we'll continue to have some of this space. So what would what would you suggest that they can do during this time to to start to take advantage of that time and space that they have? Yeah. That's a great, so my my first thing is I want, and one thing that I've done for myself is to build structure around your day, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think what, what happens also is that right now we're having, we might be overwhelmed by all the time that we have, that our, our voices and our mind is starting to like eat at us. Um, and that's not what the idea of this is. It's to literally have time to set apart to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say what, number one is, don't change, and um, and I've done this from the beginning, but do not change your routine, right? So if you were waking up at a certain time in the morning, um, continue that, you know, continue to, you know, wake up at a certain time in the morning. If you are doing certain things, continue to do them the same way. And I say that because you need some comfort, right? You, you need to feel a little bit in a normalcy, um, mm -hmm in order to feel comfortable with what we're going through right now and just how much time you have. And like then you can't just sort of like throw a whole new pattern, and a whole new structure and like, oh well, I'm going to change everything tomorrow. Cause that, that actually sets off the internal alarm system. Oh, yeah. Like that actually kicks into gear pretty heavily at the amygdala. And that's where we get in that like fight, flight, freeze, appease kind of energy is like you, you know, it, yeah. it's with good intent. But yeah. the brain doesn't know it's with good intent necessarily. So it, it just goes, whoa, too much change. I'm going to freak out. <laughs> oh, my God. Totally. And change is, I mean, you said it before. It's one of the biggest fears. I mean, it's you have to do it in bite sized pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and there is something to say about the normalcy. And when I say comfort, I don't mean get comfortable. But I mean that if there are things that you feel comfortable doing, you should continue those. Um, because it gets so overwhelming um, and we don't need that. We don't need overwhelm right now, right? We, over, mm -hmm. we have enough of that. Um, so that would be my first kind of like stay balanced with what you're doing during the day. Also, of course, it depends on what you want to work on. So like, for instance, if you're looking to do more fitness, right? Um, don't make yourself so crazy about doing an hour workout. Do something for 10 minutes, you know, because a little bit will still be something, right? So always with fitness, and I can always give um, tips and everything, but there are so many things you can do at home that you don't even need any equipment. But if that's something that you're, that like you have a goal that you've really been wanting to do, I challenge you to, to, to do it, even if it's 10 minutes a day. Um, because the truth, truth be told about that is you're, you're gaining confidence in yourself uh, by actually looking at a challenge and overcoming it and, and actually reaching a goal. So during this time, that's super important, 
right? Because yeah. right now we don't have much of, you know, something empowering us, whether it's our job, um, getting a good job, you know, or saying to ourselves, good job on the back. That was a great hair color or um, right. <laughs> great meeting presentation, right? Like those small little um, wins, if you will, are not happening right now. A lot of negative is happening. So I definitely, definitely um, encourage you to, to take a small goal and if it's fitness, if it's eating, um, do one small, you know, do one small of your meal in a healthier way. Do so you're not a fan of this, like make yourself this huge monster goal and this huge push goal. Not at all. I don't think it's, I don't think it's digestible. I think it's, first of all, especially during this time, that's way too overwhelming for somebody, you know, like it's just way too much. Do it in bite-sized pieces. Um, because a little win is a win. And I, so I think, you know, 10 minutes or not in a week's time, you're going to start to see some changes in your body and then you'll take a bigger bite. Totally. You know, yeah, I have this thing like for me personally, because I'm, I want to do the right thing. I think that most people are probably this way. I want to do the right thing, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And so yeah. what happens is if I set this this specific goal, okay, well, I'm going to get to the gym five days a week for an hour and hour every single time. As, as soon as I don't do it, then the guilt kicks in. Then it's like, oh, now I feel stupid. I didn't stick to it. So what? Well, I've already screwed up this week. Well, I'll, I'll start next week. Next week will be better. And so what I found has worked a ton better for is really small, very achievable, yeah. bite-sized chunks. And this is what you're saying. And I've, yeah. I've found for myself, it's so much better because like I have a, about a seven to 10 minute yoga, uh, just kind of circle that I can do. And that's easy. Like I can, yeah. I can do that every single day. Yeah. What ends up happening? is after I do seven to 10 minutes, and I'm like, oh, I'm revved up, let's keep going. Right. So then I end up doing a half an hour or 45 minutes some days. Some days I only do seven to 10, but it's more frequent, it's more consistent than it's ever been before when it's like, okay, I have to get to three or four classes a week and I have to have these expectations. Or it's the same thing with food too. It's like, I'm like, I, I tend to go, I'm not drinking at all this week. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> and, and then, and you then it's like, you and you're like, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, next I want to make a cocktail because it's fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. You're good at it. <laughs> um, it. 100%. And the other thing with that is, you know, I, I also find that many people don't feel comfortable in a gym setting. Um, so I always typically like to tell people, you need to find the comfort zone. Like you're saying yoga, right? Try different things, guys. You don't have to do, um, you know, like some people absolutely hate um, doing any type of cardio. Like they, they just, so, you know, I would say explore those things. There's so many different resources that I'll share them. Um, and, you know, we can share them somehow. I can give them to you, Andrew, but yeah. however we decide to do that. But there's so many different things that you can do to find what works for you. And so I think that's also kind of, it makes you feel better because it's not like, I'm not telling you to run on the treadmill. Don't do that if you don't like it. Yeah. You know, because you're, stick with it. <laughs> you're not going to stick with it. It's not realistic. Um, and so I think that's exactly, exactly how you're saying. That's what I always recommend. Do 10 minutes of something, five minutes if you need, if you have to, whatever it is, um, because it will make you feel better that you've promised yourself something and have achieved it. And that's how I usually typically, I don't really love the word goal, um, but I usually say the promise to yourself because yeah. that's really what it should be. Um, and, you know, put it on a schedule, make yourself a schedule, you know, right, right now it's super important. Give yourself, you know, give yourself that 10 minute time in between in your day that you feel, I'll give you a, a tip. It's always when you feel the most energetic. So if you wake up in the morning and you're kind of groggy, don't do your workout in the morning. 
kind of get to understand um, and know yourself when you have the most energy and schedule those 10 minutes out for your workout. Because odds are you're going to feel you'll be more empowered and feel better to do it um, versus being really groggy in the morning and just being like, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. Um, so I think that's super important to just kind of get to know yourself as well. And then later on when we, when we can talk about food and stuff, that's when everything will come into place of being able to balance yourself out and helping with energy throughout your entire day, you know, and, and that sort of thing. But for right now, just find that time that works for you. Um, and of course, you know, those would be my tips as far as food and, you know, food and fitness. And then as far as, you know, being with yourself, I think, again, I think you should schedule it out. I don't think, you know, I think you need to take some time to literally be alone um, and, and be okay with it. So I know, you know, I have an exercise I'm going to share and, you know, Andrew, I don't know when you want me to share it, but it's, it's all about being grounded. You have to be grounded and have to be okay with saying, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable now. It's, you have to talk to yourself about it, honestly, <laughs> you know, cause it is going to be uncomfortable for a while mm -hmm. if you're not used to it. For sure. Yeah. So let's talk about that let's talk about the grounding exercise mm. sure. why is why is I, I think it's a weird question maybe for me to ask but why is it so important that we find ground yeah so i think because we have and especially in a world that we're living through you know chaos okay so when chaos is around us we feel chaotic so even if you're not realizing, like we're, we're a constant, I try to uh, uh, imagine our bodies kind of like an engine, right? So the car is always running. And every single time that we turn on um, the news channel, or even when we go on Facebook sometimes, you see a lot of these negative things popping up. And if you think of it as like turning the car off and turning it back on, right? It's never a good thing to do because it burns more gas, right? right? So you're constantly being challenged with, thinking about something else, a negative thought coming in your mind. Um, I have to feed the dog. I have to do this, right? There's so many things going on, you know, for you and I, that's very relative. Yeah. Um, I have to walk the dog. There's so many things going on in our brain at all times that we're literally floating, right? It's kind of like we're floating around and we need something to take all of those thoughts out of our brain and be grounded in the place we're in at that moment. Where we are, no other thoughts in our brain, but with ourselves, feeling grounded with the earth, truly. Mm -hmm. um, because when you let all that stuff come out and all that like made up stories and voices and the things you have to do, that's when you can truly be in yourself, understand how you're feeling, right? Like okay, I have all these thoughts, but we're not necessarily like, we're not literally as those thoughts are coming on being like, oh, I'm sad. I'm happy. I'm down. I'm up. It's not happy. But in our mind, in our brains, in our body, we're doing that. It's a lot of work on ourselves. Yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Just like, just like the car, like the car is going to run out. It's going to run out of gas. So if you ground yourself, and literally just be with yourself, even if it's for a few minutes, you're able to kind of take all that stuff compartmentalize it right and just be able to understand okay this i can get done right this is over here i have time and just let it kind of clear out of your brain so that you can understand where you're at and then restart with a fresh engine fresh you know gas nice oil bag. change <laughs> exactly exactly so that's my belief on um on grounding and um like really what's going on yeah so how do we do this? Okay. So of course, most of you are probably not outside. Um, if you had, if you're able to get outside, I highly recommend that you do this um, in, in a place where there's grass or there's dirt or there's something you want to be with the earth. Okay. So I try to do it, but um, I mean, I've even gone, you might think I'm crazy, but I've even gone as, as like, as crazy as like had a pot in my house. 
of, of like of fresh dirt and have done this because I truly believe that it, it helps to be with the earth is I'm sure you agree with this. I know you love oh, yeah. nature 100%. Um, <laughs> to be with mother nature is there's nothing, you know, that's more soul fulfilling, um, in my opinion. So, but if you're not outside, that's okay. So I want you to be barefoot super important. So you're going to get your feet completely bare. Okay. You can sit, you can stand, whatever feels right for you, but I want you to place your feet on the ground and you want them to be firm, but I don't want you to be stressed. Okay. I don't want you to stress out and like press your feet on the ground or like, am I pressing hard enough? I just want your feet to feel the ground. You can close your eyes if you want. You don't have to. I typically like to because I think it helps me air out everything else. Um, but I just want you to feel your feet on the ground. And any single thought that comes into your brain, you can let it come in, but I want you to push it out. And I want you to just feel your feet on the ground. And if you can almost envision yourself growing roots into the ground as if you were a tree or a plant, and just feel grounded in yourself. So I, I don't want to, you know, of course, disrupt you, but that is something that I do very frequently. I think, yes, I see earthing is a wonderful technique. Yeah, exactly. Rubbing your feet on grass discharges the pent up energy. And that is 100% true. It is taking all of the energy, the bad energy, um, negative, um, anything that you're feeling and takes it out of you. And it just, it literally washes away. And I know that was only for a few seconds, but I know for myself, even if I do it for a few seconds, I can feel it. Right. Um, and it's just something that you're able to do no matter where you are. So even if you, when you get back into the office, because I think this is so important and a whole other conversation is being comfortable with getting out of this life now and going back into normalcy, if you will, um, that this is something you can do without anybody. Like you're not going to be like doing yoga <laughs> in the middle of the office. You know, you can do this um, when you start to feel a rise or you start to feel overwhelmed. So that's right. one of my favorite exercises to do just to stay grounded. Yeah. So Tara is asking if there is a good time of the day that specifically you would recommend doing it is just kind of laying in bed and similar. Or what, what would be different about doing something? Yeah. Amazing. Like the grounding exercise. Yeah, it's a great question. So I think mostly for, for when you're feeling the ground, well, I'll start here. The time of the day, it, and for me, I think it's mostly if you're starting to feel like vulnerable and uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, or you start feeling like things are just piling on you when you feel stressed. This is a great exercise to do to kind of let all that stuff out and just sit with yourself and say, okay, I'm, I need to ground myself right now. It's, you know, everything's going to be okay. So it's a great exercise to be able to do when you're starting to feel overwhelmed but I typically like to do this in the morning as well with the first thing that I do when I wake up. And the reason why is because right now, especially um, I'm always challenged, you know, with having a stressful day right now. Um, so I know that I need to ground myself in the beginning, in the very like early morning to say, it's going to be a good day. Let me ground myself right now. You know, you've just had how many dreams and thoughts going through your brain, because don't forget that part. Mm -hmm. um, these days I'm having some vivid dreams. So you have to kind of take all that energy out of your body to kind of restart your day. So I would say definitely um, when you first wake up and then anytime you're just feeling uncomfortable. By as far as asking for other relaxation techniques, I think you could always supplement them. You know, this isn't just like a one case all, you know, do this and you don't do anything else. I think it's also super important to know what feels right for you. Um, you know, everybody has a different way of feeling relaxed. I love music. I know you do too, Andrew. So like for me, music is, yeah, I see that. 
<laughs> my, my dad's gonna ask me to play. Um, so for me, it's kind of like, music for me is my outlet. If music comes on, I'm instantly happy. I know that, um, but it's also that's also a different feeling versus grounding. So if you feel like you need to really ground yourself and there's too much going on, this is a great exercise for that. Sure. Um, but I, I would never want to tell you don't do one thing over the other because I think it depends on what works for you, you know, what makes you feel relaxed. Yeah. I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think it's perfect. And uh, what's what's nice too is that if, if you look back through, through the previous episodes of Cabin Fever, you're yeah. going to find that most of the guests have given you guys pretty simple um, bite-sized chunk exercises that you can do, even right back to my very first guest, Dr. Suzanne Henwood. She walked us through the coherent breathing exercise. And I um, I think it was your dad here. Let me go back up. Yeah, Richard asked about breathing. And there's, there's a breathing pattern called coherent breathing. Ideally, um, it's a, a six seconds in and six seconds out. Right. And it's just an equal breath going in and out because it helps to balance out the autonomic nervous system. But then Sean Float, who was on, I think, three weeks ago, he walked us through uh, a churnings exercise, which is a shadow yoga practice. Yeah. And it's fast. It's like five minutes, and it's just moving and rolling joints to increase blood flow. And I, you know, what I'm finding uh, just through interviewing all the different people and through my own studies as well is that, like you're saying, we kind of have to uh, find for ourselves what practices give us the the kind of fuel we need or that relaxation we need so that we can design the practice to fit the need because yeah. i think you know there's times that grounding might not be the answer breathing might not be the answer maybe it's actually screaming <laughs> that's the answer in oh, the, yeah. that moment you know <laughs> and so the more you guys play with these different techniques and play with different practices you yourself will find this is my experience with this practice and that's how we start to make it something so per personal and um you know I, I think that's kind of the beauty of what like you kind of started to say this in the beginning and most of the guests recently i, I feel like i've had this same message which is like Throw out the program diets, throw out the program and exercise programs, throw out the program anything because it, it has to be personal. Yeah, it's custom. It's customized. None of our yeah. makeups are the same, you know. Um, and I, I think, too, like for myself, you know, I think we have so many... I can say for my own self, and I'm sure though some people will agree with this, I always felt like a hypocrite because I wasn't a hundred percent living this like positive lifestyle, right? Like you see so many people, like you know, they're talking about yoga and they're doing this, and they're, you're like, oh my god, hundred percent of the time I'm not living like that. So yeah. am I? You know, how can I? Can, how can I speak to this, or how can I coach somebody, or how can I? help in a certain way or am I being a hypocrite you know like all these thoughts come into your brain and the truth is sometimes I am angry at the TV or like you know it's I can't live this life a hundred percent of the time right. um, and I think that's something to be to for like all of you listening it's okay to feel however you need to feel it's actually really good to allow yourself to feel those emotions so you know, but then again, you also have to be mindful of what those emotions are. And to Andrew's point, then, then understand, you know, okay, what do I need to balance this out? Yin and yang, right? Um, yeah. I follow mm -hmm. a, I follow a macrobiotic diet. I'm sure you probably know a lot about uh, macrobiotics, Andrew, in some ways, and it's all about yin and yang and um, finding balance uh, in everything that you do. So you have to just, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. Yeah. Um, and I think that's such a common misconception. It's like, oh my God, I sound so negative, right? You hear that all the time. Oh my God, I'm being negative. I have to stop being negative. 
I'd rather you own it. And, you know, like my husband can tell you, there are definitely times where I am like, Dah! you know, I, for the, <laughs> I can get negative. It's, it happens. Of course. Um, but you have to own it. And then you have to say, okay, what do I need to fix this about myself? Um, and you can't, like, to your point, you can't just, you can't try to practice, you know, whatever it is every single day and just say like, oh, I'm going to practice this every day for an hour and um, be positive for every, you know, for the rest of my life. It, it's, it's too much to handle. That's too much to, to bite. It doesn't have right. to be that way. Yeah, we, we definitely have a tendency to, we want to run so fast away from any kind of experience that we'd like to label as negative. And the reality is, is we, we have to feel all the feels to use the, uh, you know, anachronism that's been happening lately. Yeah, we, we have to experience all of this. Th this is what being human is, right? Is, human is not, I'm perfect, and I'm happy all the time. <laughs> so if we're going to live the human experience, what what I really enjoy about, um, you know, I'm super into uh, studying spirituality. Yeah. And part of the, the teachings from Buddhism <clears throat> is that they really try to get to a place where, <clears throat> excuse me, sneeze. You. <laughs> See, you're speaking um, the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, they try to get to a place where uh, the negative experiences and the positive experience don't have weight to them. It's just experience. And I know that's lofty, but I, I think it's just a beautiful way to explain the fact that, you know, most of our suffering comes from, from our judgment of the experience. Oh. So um, we've, we've got to take it all. It's, it's all going to be okay. And that, that probably hurts a little bit, maybe for, for some, especially right now, because I know there's some deep, deep pain and suffering happening out there. Yeah. yeah. That's, I love that you said that though, because it's true. We are so conditioned, right? Like yeah. it's always, it's gotta be one or the other negative, positive. Um, it's like a battery, you know, yeah. it's, um, but if you think of, uh, think of it that way, you need the opposite to charge. Totally. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't know, you know, we, we have to feel both. You have to, um, but it doesn't have to all be, it could be an experience. It doesn't have to be labeled. Um, and so that's an amazing, I love how you said that because that's, it's a hundred percent true. And there's like, you're saying there's a lot of people that are dealing with pain right now, but if you can look through the storm, um, and the clouds and, you know, whatever the darkness of it, we really can come out of this um, stronger uh, personally, I believe. If, mm -hmm. you know, even if you do just one change in within yourself, um, because you didn't have the time, quote unquote, to do it before. You're really, you know, you're, you're able now to do things that you've always said you wanted to do, but have either... I hate to say it, found excuses or just didn't have the time. So um, it can be great for us personally coming out of this, um, you know, in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've definitely seen in people's, even in their comments throughout yeah. this whole program that I, I think that a lot of people are in that mental space that, hey, I can find some type of release or positive experience and what especially from the news is you know just destruction and terrible things but you know I've, I found that I've talked to so many people that have actually found a lot of peace during this time and and have found things and I know for myself my life has changed in in many ways in incredible ways yeah. that I will not return to normal life. And, you know, actually it kind of takes me back. I saw a couple of comments right in the very beginning that, you know, people were talking about the fact that they're really feeling good being home. Yeah. And so there's some of us that, 
you know, I've, I have a couple of coaching clients that I'm working right now. And one of them specifically is like, I am so happy right now to just be peaceful at home. And she's like, how do I take this back into the salon with my, cause she's a salon owner. And she's like, yeah, you know, just this, this time that I've had has helped me to realize how important this being with self is. And so maybe that's where we can kind of start to put a little closure on this. You have anything that you might recommend as we start to move back into our busy lifestyles, because it's, it's starting to happen. States are really opening up pretty quickly. Now it's kind of, seems like almost like a domino effect at the moment. So um, things are opening up fast. How do, how do they continue to find these great things that they have that might be a little hard to admit that like you're actually feeling really happy in the middle of a pandemic, but how do you carry some of those gifts forward into the busier lifestyle? Yeah, that's a great, first of all, I want to say that I'm so happy to hear that people are feeling happy and I see some things here like that that is happening and that people are feeling peace because I hoped for that when, during this time. So I just want to say that I'm, I'm happy to hear that people are feeling that. Um, and I see this amazing, I want to see, want to say this because I, this will kind of segue into what I'm going to say. And it says, I feel like quarantine can be our cocoon. Hmm. And that, and I love, that is so amazing because I, I continuously say, I feel like it's, um, this like little box that we're going like, duh, 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 and finally it's going to pop open. We're like, yeah, you know, we're here. Um, but with that being said, there are a lot of thoughts going on in our head, pop, you know, ones that like, oh, I'm going to try a new skill and I'm, and I've just learned something new and I, I don't want you to explode out of this box. So please, you know, before you go back, I want you to really create structure around what your day is going to look like. Um, at, for the salon world, I'll say this. Your clients are going to need a little bit more TLC right now. So please do not overwhelm yourself with booking 25 people in a day. Yeah. Please, please don't do that. I understand. I completely understand. Like, make money and everything, but for sustainability, for your own self, um, for your business, please make sure that you are giving yourself enough time in your appointments um, to one just build, rebuild that relationship uh, with your client, but also to not overwhelm yourself. You are going to burn out. Um, quickly if you do that. Um, and I will remind you guys, because I've been in many salons and I know Andrew has too, that the common challenge was that you didn't have enough time. <laughs> totally. So please remember that. Remember how you felt and remember that right now you can come out of this cocoon or out of the box with being able to kind of change your structure to make it better for you. So I really, really hope that anybody that's working in a salon or any type of business that has appointments around it, give yourself that cushion time. Um, allow that for yourself so that you're not overcharged and then you feel completely overwhelmed after a week of going back and you're like, my God, I just wish I could go back home because right. um, it can happen. So that would be my first you know, tip for you guys. And also, you know, now more than ever, and I'll say this again for salons, please make sure that you give yourself time to eat. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but... Um, Doesn't sound ridiculous at all. Andrew, you know this. I mean, our, our you know, our amazing stylists and colorists, they work all day long. And um, a lot of times they're either standing up and like eating bites at a time Um and I'm sure this happens to a lot of you, whether you're a hairstylist or not, please give yourself time to sit down and to eat because it is so, there are so many who reasons far beyond just nourishing your body that I'll get into, we can get into it another sure. time. But um, I really want you to do that because you need, you need that for balance. Um, and the other thing is don't lose your skill that you're working on right now. Like I have friends that started taking a language, 
You know, I have friends that have started um, reading, like doing a book club. I have all these, these, you know, all these different things that you've been able to finally do that you've mm -hmm. always wanted to. Don't let that go. So if you have that, again, put it in a schedule. Give yourself, if there's a day and time that you can, you know, dedicate to continuing on with that skill, uh, to follow through with the promise to yourself, please put it on your schedule. Because the last thing that you want to do, you want to rise above all of this. You want to come out of it stronger and and um, and feel better forever, not just for a small amount of time. So those would be my like quick tips to kind of help with going back. Definitely. I think it's perfect. And honestly, like what's super exciting to me is to just see the rush of comments of support and that like, yeah, I'm going to take my time. Our clients don't deserve to be rushed through. Uh, the clients need us. Yeah. Um, Kelly's saying she wants to take this time to do something differently. That, that was one of the points that really came up strong for my coaching client last week. You know, she kind of came to it. She's like, in some ways, this is actually my excuse to make the changes that I didn't have the courage to do before because I didn't want to hurt my client's feelings. Now I kind of have this thing I can kind of blame it on. <laughs> like, in a, in your dad actually mentioned about social distancing is going to continue. So yeah, this is in some ways, guys, this is your excuse to reset that appointment structure. Don't go back to doing 50 hour work weeks and don't go back to, you know, trying to squeeze everything so tightly together, restructure. And when your clients, you know, and, and by the way, your clients aren't going to complain about it because they get it. That's something that we make up in our head that we're going to let the people down. We tell ourselves we're going to let them down. They, they're fine. They'll be okay. Yeah, you're going to have the one pain in the ass that <laughs> is going to be like, I need to get in today because my grades are rare. Well, that's one client. <laughs> Most of your clientele is going to be stoked that you say, hey, because of what we're experiencing, I'm going to shift my schedule to something healthier. Most of your clientele is going to be, yeah, that's awesome. High five. I'll wait an extra week. So, you know, use this time to, to make those changes. Yeah. Remember when a window closes, the door opens. So if you, when you start to flush out the people that aren't necessarily empowering you or making you feel so good, mm -hmm. you're just allowing for more um, better in your life and, a, you know, healthier life. So um, if that does happen with a client, then then you're just giving yourself the ability or the opportunity to have uh, another amazing relationship come into your life. So um, yeah, I, I know because people do get stuck on that. And to your point, Andrew, I will say now is the time to be who you want to be. And when I was young, when I was about 13 years old and we moved, I remember that's how I looked at my move. I said, well, I could be whoever I want to be. I'm going to a new school with new people, right? Of course, no, you're not really going to necessarily see new people, but you can come out of this whoever you want to be. So if there was some, if there's something that you've always, you wanted to be like, oh, I really wanted to be a more positive person, or I really wanted to be, you know, whatever it is, you can be that now. You can come back and you can, you can do that. So that's, you know, how cool is that? That's awesome. Very beautifully said. So Ashley, how do you, how do people connect with you? Because I've had a couple of people ask um, yeah. how, the, how they connect with you. So give them, give them the rundown of where they can find you. And then I'll add those things into the description of the video so that they're locked in there. So you guys can always go back and check if you forget. Thank you. Um, so you can always, you can find me on Instagram, which is um, at Ashley underscore M underscore official. I'm Ashley Moriello on Facebook. Um, and I am constantly on, I'm constantly on Instagram. I always check Facebook. Um, so if there, please send me a message. Um, I mean, I could even get an email too, Andrew. I don't know if you, do you give emails as well? Um, I'm happy to put it into the, uh, 
description box in the video if, if you want them to have your email. Absolutely. I have no Whatever comment. you want to share with them. Okay, so it's Ashley GM at showupevents.com. Um, and, and like I said, if you didn't catch those guys, we'll put them into the description on the video so that you can come back and connect with Ashley. Thank sure. you. Um, yeah, I think you know, any time that you need to feel, you know, <laughs> better connected, please reach out to me. I love to hear from you. And Andrew, this was amazing. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like light, if that makes sense. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, I love to hear that. This was incredible. And thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, and I hope that we can do this again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing some light to my day, for bringing oh. some light to their day. Um, and next week, my friends, we'll continue on with the journey, or <laughs> not the journey of Sunday. That's on Sundays. Um, <laughs> but Kevin, next Friday. Um, next Friday, we have my friend Scott. He's going to be on to talk to you guys about some really incredible stuff that we're discovering about the gut and the gut biome and resiliency and even some new research about how it affects with COVID-19, which is really interesting. Um, so be sure to tune in next week at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific to Gavin Fever. So thank you, Ashley. Thank you all. Thank you we'll so you much. Next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>